Ubuntu is currently one of the most popular Linux distributions for people who want to get into Linux. However, everyone has to start somewhere. So, today, we're taking a look at the first version of Ubuntu, version 4.10, which was released on October 20th, 2004. The first thing that we have to take a look at is the installer. There's two versions of the installer, the live CD or the installer CD. At this point in time, they were not combined, they were separate. There is no graphical user interface in the installer, it is purely text-based, and you have to use a keyboard to navigate around it. In fact, it kind of reminds me of a Windows 3.1 installer. Unlike current versions of Ubuntu, instead of setting up the operating system while it's installing, you have to set it up after it installs, which technically wastes more time. Taking a look at the setup, it looks identical to the installer. You can only navigate this setup by using your keyboard, there is no graphical interface, and you can't use a mouse. So you enter a username and a password, and then you have to confirm the password. After this, it will go into a text-based sort of script that will configure everything in the system, and then once that is finished, you will see your Ubuntu login screen. Now, some things you may notice on this login screen is that the login asks you for your username instead of showing a list of all the users that are shown on the computer. There is a large Ubuntu logo right above the username tab, as well as the background is just a standard gradient. And on the bottom bar, we have options to change our language, session settings, an option to reboot the system, shut down, as well as the time and date. Entering the username and password that we configured during setup, we can see a Mac OS-like loading screen. This shows everything that's loading, as well as the Ubuntu logo. So for example, the window manager was loading there, and here we are, the Ubuntu 4.10 desktop. The desktop environment that Ubuntu chose for this distribution is, of course, the GNOME desktop environment. And if we take a look in the Applications menu, we can see that a lot of icons are still the default GNOME icons, and a lot has not been customized to custom Ubuntu icons. In the Applications menu, we have different categories such as Accessories, Games, Graphics, Internet, Multimedia, Office, System Tools, Help, About Ubuntu, and a Run Application menu. We also, under Computer, have other categories, such as Home, Desktop, Disks, Network, Recent Documents, Search for Files, Desktop Preferences, System Configuration, Take a Screenshot, as well as Log Out and Sign In. The bottom bar on the Ubuntu desktop is used to show which applications are open. So, opening Archive Manager, we can see that it shows up on the taskbar, just like it would on a Windows XP or Vista machine. The taskbar is also used to show your trash as well as switch between the four desktops that are inside of the operating system. Right clicking on the desktop brings up a ton of options including the option to use the default background as well as change the background. By default there are only two backgrounds configured which is Ubuntu Chocolate and Ubuntu Chocolate widescreen. Let's look at what's pre-installed in this machine. Under accessories we have archive manager, calculator, a character map, a dictionary, and a text editor. There are a ton of games pre-installed, including Mines with this really weird and creepy face while you play Minesweeper. Yeah, I like the Windows one better. For graphics, we have a Postscript viewer, an image viewer, another image viewer, the GIMP, which is now GIMP, and an image scanning program. These were all pre-installed. Under the internet, we have Evolution Mail, a Internet Messenger, a Meeting application, Mozilla Firefox, a Server Client, and XChat IRC. Under multimedia, we have a whole bunch of players such as a CD player, music player, CD ripper, and that kind of stuff. Under office, this is when Ubuntu used to come with open office instead of LibreOffice. System tools category, of course, had system tools like bug report, system monitor, and terminal. Let's take a look at open office 1.1. Of course, this fits the year 2004 as it does look very old and outdated by today's standards. This is before Ubuntu started shipping with LibreOffice, and I am really happy that they started shipping with that. Right next to the Applications menu, there was a Computer menu, which featured a whole bunch of shortcuts. Now, in the File Manager, when you would double-click on a folder, the folder would open up in another window instead of switching in that one window. I think this was kind of pointless and a time waster. Clicking on Disks, of course, brought up a My Computer-like window, which showed all the disks attached to your computer. Of course, there was also Search Files, Desktop Preferences, System Configuration, as well as the option to take a screenshot and log out and lock screen. Clicking on lock screen, there was actually a very weird lock screen known as X Screen Saver 4.16. You would, you would be able to change the username as well as the password, and this was definitely not user-friendly and not the most efficient lock screen. 
Now, of course, on a 16-year-old operating system, the web browser, which in this case is Mozilla Firefox, is not going to be the most efficient or fast web browser. However, typing in google.com and waiting a little bit, simply because it had to connect to the server, we were at a skimmed down version of Google. Now, this is actually functioning on the 2020 internet, which I think is pretty cool. Now let's try and load a modern website such as apple.com. Apple.com has a ton of animations and it just loaded as all text. The Apple website on Ubuntu 4.10 is definitely broken. So you would have to find a more modern web browser to run on this distribution. Let's try to take a screenshot. Going to computer, take screenshot, it takes a screenshot and then asks us where we want to save the file. So if we save it to the desktop, screenshot.png shows up and we can see a whole bunch of things in the image viewer. Compared to some modern operating systems, this method of taking a screenshot is much easier. We can now open the GIMP version 2, which is very old, and attempt to create something. Clicking on the text option, I could not get anything to show up. Maybe this is just because I have no idea how to use this application, but I couldn't figure out how to use it and we weren't able to create anything with it. Taking a look at desktop preferences under computer, I found something interesting. It was an entry called Palm OS Devices. I did not want to know what this was at the time, so I clicked on it and went through the setup. It turns out this was some kind of communication device from 1996 that is no longer in use today. Taking a look at one last thing, which is the help contents. The help contents is not very user friendly in terms of the GUI, however it is filled with a lot of information and subcategories. I think that this is very helpful for people who wanted to learn about this distro, however I think that they could have made it more visually appealing. In 2020, I would not use this distribution as my main operating system considering Ubuntu version 20.04 is free and we are expecting a version 20.10 in October. Anyway guys, what do you think about this distro? Definitely let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're new around here as I upload a ton of technology videos and device restorations. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.